about to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for So you want to book a trip to Komodo Islands, but you're not sure how. The goal of this video is to share with you information that will make booking this adventure a lot simpler than we found it. Yes, we ran through a number of options uh, to try to get this tour booked. We knew we had to go see the Komodo Dragons and Komodo National Park. First thing we did was talk with our Airbnb host here. We love them, they're wonderful people. We, they had no information, uh, nobody had really booked that trip with them. It was literally a dead end. Second thing is we started to chat with people around our pool area and they gave us a tip. Oh, you just walk on down to your local beach, chat with some boat tour operators. I'm sure you'll get it sorted. So we took the whole afternoon and chatted with boat tour operators and nobody took a boat from Bali over to Komodo National Island. Dead end number two. We started to Google Komodo Island trips and Facebook. Not a dead end. Lots of tour companies booking, but the prices were a tad shocking. We thought, really, we're going to have to budget multiple hundred dollars uh, to go. And okay, if that's what it is, that's what it is. But I had a feeling there was another option. And this video is coming to you today to maybe speed you up. If you're looking to save a few bucks or make your money go a little farther, then the information might just give you a little confidence to try the route that we did to um, book your trip. Guys, if you do decide to take the route of booking online, you'll know that it's the most convenient and least time consuming way to book your adventure, but it's also going to be the most expensive. For us, it was an easy option or an easy choice to look more into other ways to book because we're always trying to be money conscious and make our money go farther which is one of the techniques we use to add more freedom in our life. We decided to go on faith to book a one-way flight from Dempasar Bali to Labuan Bajo, Flores. We pre-booked the hotel for the first night. Then we knew the next morning we would talk to tour operators and get some pricing. And after I knew what we were going to book, a one-day, two-day, three-day, four-day, then I knew I could book my hotel for that same night and my return flight. The airlines that we chose to uh, explore was Garuda Air, Lion Air, Nam Air, and Air Asia. I was shut down on several different websites. Garuda page would not load for me. The Nam Air would not allow me to change the date. So it boiled down to Air Asia being the only option for us. And the price was decent. Okay, so for the flights, Nam Air, I booked a one-way flight. It was 997000 For Canadian dollars, you just move the decimal back four points and then lower the, the value by a few dollars, we'll call it. Our one way back later on was only 9.72. We landed in Labuan Bajo, it was before 11 a.m. We had the whole day ahead of us. It was pretty relaxed. We bought some really awesome bakso soup, which is like a beef soup with meatballs. We had time to just walk around and talk to, they're all within a one to two block radius. So depending on where you book your hotel, you can just walk down the street and go into this kiosk, this kiosk, and start to talk. They ranged from a private boat with just two or four people, very intimate, to a boat with eight people, which ultimately is what we chose, to a boat with 15 people, 25 people. We wanted something a little more intimate. The private boat appealed to us um, with maybe two or four people, but they really ranged. Um, to book a private boat, they ranged from four million, we got five million, we got seven million, which is the equivalent of about 700 Canadian dollars. There's also fast boat versus slow boat, so you can decide what you'd like to do. We heard that the fast boat, one day tour, pew, 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 hitting a bunch of destinations and coming back was too rushed. There wasn't enough time to really enjoy the boat ride, really enjoy the snorkeling. So for us, we knew fast boat and one day was not going to be enough. The slow boats take a nice amount of time. For us, I really liked it for our first tour. In Komodo, it took a nice time between islands to to see the surroundings, to sit and chat, to meet our other guests on the boat, which were wonderful people. Enjoy the food at a leisurely pace, have a snooze. Guys, you can really customize your adventure to your interests. So for example, 
Uh, if you book a higher capacity boat, you're probably going to experience things like lower cost per person. You're going to experience things like a larger group, so it's probably going to be more of a festive party type atmosphere, if that's what you're into. You're probably going to see less destinations and less time on that destination, less control over destinations. If you like more of a relaxed type atmosphere, you may want to consider booking a boat with less capacity. Generally, it's going to be quieter. Generally, you'll have a little bit more control over the destinations you've visited and maybe a little bit more time per destination. And lastly, you can book a private boat where you would have almost total control over your destinations, when you come and go, uh, but then of course your cost per person will increase also. They, they seem to have some flexibility, the tour companies had some flexibility with um, the lower capacity boats. You could talk more with your captain and say, can we skip this destination and go to this destination? Mm -hmm. It's totally possible to do Komodo National Park and hit many, many spots, five or six destinations for under 500 Canadian flights, hotel and the boat tour included. Mm -hmm. Some of the topics to maybe touch on when you are entering each kiosk and store to talk to uh, tour companies is ask to see a picture of the boat. You'll get an idea if it's a ginormous 30 capacity boat or if it's a very intimate tight cabin bunk boat. Ask them about the food, what kind of food are they serving you. You could also maybe ask them if you're allowed to pay a deposit up front rather than the full amount up front and then the next day pay for the full. That was important to us also. Mm -hmm. One of the questions uh, that was important for us was um, to inquire about the food. And I have to say that uh, in our experience, one of the positives on our trip was the amount and the flavor of the food that our crew prepared and served us. Uh, we were a little bit uh, unsure about what we would experience here, but looking back on it, uh, they took really good care of us in this regard. So I want to touch on a few things that we experienced on the boat. And again, this is based on the price point of the trip that we booked. You can get more or less luxury if you're willing to spend more or less money. For our price point was 800,000 rupiah per person. We got a shared cabin so that we met an, a really nice other couple. Uh, but there was a bunk, so we took the upper bunk. There was just tiny windows, maybe not bigger than our face. They did not open, but there was an air conditioning unit, so that saved us. We turned it on and made it nice for everyone. But even our boat was, I would call it on the basic side, it had multiple charging outlets, so just bring your adapter. It's the two-prong uh, adapter, and it charged our cell phones multiple times. Every time we would jump back in the boat from a snorkel, we plugged everything in. It worked out really well. Yeah, this was a positive, I think. Just so you know, it's um, it's a used boat in a developing country, so the floor, they had pasted on some sticky lino kind of wallpapery stuff on the... It was coming up, there was a sinky soft spot in the floor, we thought maybe our foot might go, <laughs> might go through. It was a bit rustic, I have to admit. So, we don't know this though when we're booking the tour, so you can ask these questions. It might not be the Ritz. If you want the Ritz and a really beautiful boat, you learn as you go, maybe we would have paid a little bit more to get a private cabin. There was a couple on our boat who had a private cabin and they said it was right next to the generator. They could smell the gasoline smell from the generator coming in all night. They had a terrible sleep. It's up to you. It might not be the most comfortable, luxurious trip, but keep in mind you're there to see the incredible Komodo dragon, manta rays, um, and experience Southeast Asia. Yeah, exactly. Like Lori said, if you can focus on the positives of the adventure you're going to have and hopefully minimize the accommodations that you might experience at our price point anyway, the memories were a high point and the accommodations maybe not so much. Well, maybe we'll talk uh, about some of the destinations that we did visit that were important to us and some that maybe you could skip. Yeah. Now this is based on our interests and experience, uh, you guys are all different out there. First and foremost, the thing we were most interested in uh, prior to booking was seeing the Komodo Dragons. The reoccurring feedback from multiple companies that we talked with was that Rincha Island was preferred over Komodo Island for seeing the Komodo Dragons. We're not sure uh, if this is the case or not, but we can tell you after visiting Rincha that you will see Komodo dragons. You'll see many of them close up, some large ones. As far as that goes, we were very satisfied with our experience. The next destination for us was a place called Padar Island. 
You may have seen pictures or videos from this spot. The viewpoint from the top of this island is unforgettable. It's magnificent. So once you arrive on Padar Island, you'll go on a short but steep hike to the viewpoint. And uh, if you're lucky enough, you'll get to take in a sunrise or a sunset here. We highly recommend including this as part of your experience. For us, it was probably one of the top memories. Another sought after location on this adventure is a pink beach. And this is a sight worth seeing. One thing that we found out was that there are more than one pink beach in the region. I think we got lucky. Our captain took us around the corner to a lesser traveled pink beach on Padar Island. And this experience was everything I'd hoped for. We were the first ones there. Uh, it was basically just after sunrise. The beach was pristine, no garbage. I'm not sure if they're starting to clean the beaches before you arrive, but uh, it was fantastic for us. We had a nice snorkel there. We were able to enjoy a beautiful spot. In my opinion, this is a must see. You'd want to talk to your tour organizers as to which pink beach that they're considering taking yes. you to. You probably can't go wrong on any of the beaches, but for sure some of them are lesser traveled than others. After Pink Beach, it was back in the boat, a short sail on our way to Manta Point. For us, it was a one in a lifetime opportunity. We'd never seen or had a swimming experience with manta rays before. It took a little bit of time to sail around and thanks to our guides for uh, being a keen eye and really helping us to locate the mantas. We had a very memorable experience interacting with the manta rays. One thing to note is I'm a jellyfish magnet. <laughs> Perhaps they're never there except for when I decide to swim with the mantas. Just so you know you'll feel little tingles on your skin at least the time of the year or month that we went there were many jellyfish. Um, we didn't really know it at the time but the very next day um, we still have itching scars to prove it and so just just a heads up if you have a swimming shirt or even a a pair of leggings you can wear, it will really save your body. Maybe your partner can oil you up, something. We would jump in again tomorrow, yeah. guys, knowing about the jellyfish, because the experience with the mantas was oh, that yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Siaba Island is another destination that we experienced on our tour. The main attraction of this location is uh, you get to swim with and view turtles. Now, this is a more common activity that can be done in several spots around the world, but for us, still very enjoyable. Uh, clear water, shallow, up close swimming with the turtles. This uh, location here we can recommend. Yeah, your boat will probably stop there anyway. And then the last stop was Canal Island. The way the brochures <laughs> and the tour guides pitch it is it's uninhabited. We thought, oh beautiful, many fish and all this and you know, um, our personal opinion is we might have just skipped that destination and spent more time with the mantas or turtles. Um, because for, for maybe 300 feet off the shoreline, there's a big pier where all the boats stop and all the tourists come in. The coral was unfortunately dead all the way up to the shore. Mm -hmm. There were many fish, for sure, mm -hmm. but I think there could be better spots to stop at. It's more of a beach resort than it is a wild experience uh, in your Komodo adventure. Those are the destinations we hit on our particular two-day, one-night tour for 800,000 rupiah per person, uh, 1.6 million. After experiencing the Komodo Islands adventure, if we were to do it over again, here's how we think it would go for us. We would book a one day fast boat private tour and we would customize the locations that we visited. Yes. For us, we've already seen the Komodo dragons, but you would definitely want to include this in your experience. For us though, if we were to return having seen the Komodos already, we would definitely include Padar Island, one of the pink beaches, we would want to swim with the mantas and we would uh, like to see the flying foxes at sunset. We would really push for staying more time at our favorite locations with the organizers and so that we were satisfied with the amount of time we've had to experience each location before moving on. Yes. For instance, between Padar Island and Manta Point, we were on the boat, the slow boat, for a nice long time. We sailed over some incredible coral. All of us were chomping to want to dive in and snorkel there, but the boat had to get to its next destination, so we never were able to jump in there. We would ask again if we were able to anchor or float there and jump in just for even 10, 15 minutes. So we bypassed the most beautiful spot to get to the mantas, and there's that chunk that we would love to redo. 
Mm -hmm. One more noteworthy uh, takeaway. Uh, our whole boat, all eight people agreed on this, is we did all the hiking on the first day and then we did mm -hmm. all the swimming on the second day. Mm -hmm. It actually was a bit uncomfortable on both days. So what we would have done, and maybe you can talk with your tour captain, is to book a hike on the first day and then a swim. Even if it's just jumping off the side of your boat to cool off, uh, that would be better. Mm -hmm. And then some kind of a hike on the second day and then a swim. Yeah, arranged this way with two hikes on one day and then all swimming the next day. Uh, it was very hot out for the hikes and uh, many of us were becoming fatigued from this and all we wanted to do was jump in the ocean and it, we couldn't have we it. We couldn't wait to jump in the ocean and it never happened, we all just went to bed. Yeah, and then on the other hand, the next day, basically it was swim destination after swim destination and unfortunately several of our shipmates were tired of swimming by then and they didn't even go in the water for the third and fourth location. So a little bit of balance in your tour would be a good thing to explore and try to get. So maybe a hike, swim, 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 hike, swim, swim, hike would be a good way to go. <laughs> and we know it might not be possible to get because the, the boat driver is not going to zigzag back and forth through all the islands. He has to make a, a reasonable uh, path through the islands. And so if all the hikes do pile up in the beginning and then you're in the water all the way home, we get that. And I think that's what happened. But minimally, after one of the hikes, if you can just ask to jump in the water, do it and then you'll be refreshed for the next hike the same day. <laughs> the town Labon Bajo itself, you know, there is information online on Google about it's a developing um, city. Don't expect uh, perfection. Here in Southeast Asia also there's challenges. We had some of those challenges creep up. The first night I thought I booked an air conditioning room. Nope, turns out there's just mosquito nets and they recommended to close and lock the door. So we were pretty warm the first night. On the way out after we returned from our boat trip, we ended up in a nice room. We paid the money, got the key, and the power went out immediately. We still needed to book our flight home. We didn't know how that was gonna work out. The water in the room was controlled by a electric pump also. So now we have no, no lights, no power, no internet, no water to shower. And it was uh, pretty fun there for about, it turns out it was only an hour, but we, we thought this could last all night. So the time of year that we went from, uh, flew from Bali to Labuan Bajo Flores, uh, it was quite a bit warmer and more humid in Labuan Bajo. We noticed significantly the increase in heat and humidity, and so we want to share with you that the time we went, which was November, making sure you book an air conditioning room will probably be a valuable tip. So maybe we'll just recap again how we decided to do it. We booked from where we're staying in Bali, a one-way flight out of Bali to Labuan Bajo, Flores. And I booked my first night on Airbnb. That's all I booked, a one-way flight and a hotel that night. Then we flew, uh, we dropped our bags in the room and then we hit the little one or two block strip and then we started to talk to people. Right after paying our deposit for the boat tour, we went back to our hotel and I was able to book the, the hotel for when we returned and then our flight back to Bali. So it's kind of a process. You don't know what you'll book until you're there and then you'll have dates to, um, to book a hotel and flight to come home. That was the way we did it. It was a big money saver. Um, and we're just trying to give a little information so that you feel comfortable with doing that process. You don't have to have it all booked before you go and there's lots of options when you get there. Our hotel I booked the first night was 295,000 rupiah. There's many options. You can go on Airbnb, you can go on Red Doors, uh, the app, you can go on Agoda, and you can also just land and walk around and ask. We actually got unlucky and lucky all at the same time. When we got back from our tour, we had no hotel booked and was, were promised to stay a night with friends. Some unfortunate events eliminated that option for us. So the man was so kind and drove us around and we got a room for 16 Canadian dollars, 170,000 rupiah, and a free ride to the airport. So our costs are gonna look really low here, uh, but they are on Red Doors. You can find a really inexpensive room. Okay, so our taxi pickup and delivery to the airport was a total of 60,000. Our boat tour, the one we chose was two day and one night, 
and our total price was 800,000 rupiah per person, so 1.6 million. There's additional fees if you want to snorkel, it's 50,000 rupiah per person per day. Uh, depending on which islands you stop at, if you stop at Rincha Island to see Komodos, it's 300,000 rupiah per person per day. If you go to Komodo, it's more. Our total fees for the trip were 350,000 rupiah per person, so a total of 700,000 rupiah. And the last point was tip. We decided to tip our guide on Rincha, showing us the Komodo. He was wonderful. And we also decided to tip our boat crew for fellows who were very kind and treated us great. The total tips for the trip was 150,000 rupees. All said and done, flights, hotel, taxi, food for the two-day tour, everything was 4.944 million rupiah. And you'll see my conversion in Canadian. So for us, we found it super affordable, less than half price to do the tour when you actually land in Labuan Bajo and talk with the tour operators. Our hope is that you found this video helpful and the information that we shared with you will make your experience booking a Komodo Island adventure much more simple than the experience we had. There was so much confusion. How do we book it? Do we fly there? Do we take a boat there? And if, you, if we've missed on something, please just put a comment below. Uh, we'll answer it back as to uh, how to how to go about booking your tour if you have a question. And we know the answer will help. If you like this video, press the like button. It's helpful. Consider subscribing to our channel. This is Plan Free. My name's Air. I'm Lori. Oh, you're wearing it. How awesome. <laughs> Don't put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? I don't know. I guess so. <clears throat> I did my numbers. Why are you working? Why are you working? Are you the noisy girl?